We've reached the halfway point of the Southeast Missouri Christmas Tournament, and now we get a day off. You ready for that, Rachel? Yes, I'd like to sleep. <laughs> I agree. I could use a few hours of sleep myself. But we have learned a, a lot over the first two days of the tournament. We have our semifinal set. The first semifinal will be between Charleston and Cape Central. Two teams have met in the SEMO Conference Tournament semifinals, a game that Charleston won on its way to the SEMO Conference Tournament title. Rachel, we've seen both those teams play a couple of games here in the, the Missouri Tournament. What have we learned about the two teams? What have we learned? I, I'm not sure what we've learned. They, they kind of um, are who we thought they were to break out a uh, to break out an old classic line. But you know, I didn't see the first game between them. Um, but I think it's obviously there's a clash of styles here. It happens a lot in basketball, obviously. So you know, Charleston's probably going to be trying to speed Cape Central up. Cape Central's probably going to be trying to slow Charleston down, make sure they get the ball into T.J. Tisdale. Um, and I assume Charleston's going to try to keep the ball out of his hands because once he gets it, you know, then it's hard, hard to stop. So, um, you know, it'll be, it's, it's another thing of who can make whom play, play the way they want them to, you know. And so and I think it's interesting, too, because they have played each other before. So we're getting to see, you know, Drew Church and Cape Central will be able to go back and think about what happens to watch. I'm sure watch the film of what happened and make adjustments, you know. And Charleston will come in smarter and better too. So, so that I think always makes it more interesting what you're seeing teams play for a second time. Sure, the the two teams that, that lost uh, to those teams, uh, Scott City put up a heck of a fight against Charleston and Jackson a, a well of a fight against Central. I think that that game for in the fifth place. Semifinals is also going to be a great game. Both, both teams, I think, really showed that they are above-average teams, that they're solid, that they know how to, to play basketball. And I, I really see that game being a really good game to watch. Right. I think, you know, they were two different teams in the Scott City. For me, anyway, we talked about – we knew Scott City had made a big step this year, but mm -hmm. just how good were they. Mm -hmm. And tonight, I mean, they gave Charleston all they wanted for the whole game. And I think people – the natural thing when you see an eight seed taking a one seed down the wire is, oh, well, did Charleston play bad? Or, oh, did – Scott City shoot super hot. It didn't seem like that tonight. Um, I'm sure Charleston will have some things they wanted to pick on. I'm sure Scott City will have some things they wanted to pick on. But it seemed like two good teams playing a good basketball team, a good basketball game to me. And so I think we learned about, you know, Scott City's really pretty good. You know, I think they're the hands down favorite in their district now. And, you know, after that, I don't, I'm not sure what happens. But, um, you know, and for Jackson to come back and play Central the way they did right. uh, within two points, um, you know, I think could be a big confidence boost for them because we've seen a really up and down year for them so far. You know, they take Vienna and Vienna into overtime, and then they kind of struggled against uh, who they play in the first round. I can't remember now. Uh, Orion. Yeah, yeah, they let Orion hang around for a little while in the first round, and we're sort of like, well, you know, what is this team? So tonight, I think you know there was a lot of motion in that game. So mm -hmm. a lot of you know, and obviously it's a rivalry game, but to see them and the way they were reacting to plays, you know, how hard they were playing, it has to be a good sign for them moving forward. I would think, sure. um, you know, so that game, I don't know, I don't know how they match up. I don't know how it works out, um, but I think they're two interesting teams to keep watching because um, you kind of don't know what you're going to get all the way. You don't right. really know which Jackson team is going to show up maybe. And, you know, we're still learning about this, this Scott City team. So, um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing that one as well. Sure. One of the, the close game, what was anticipated to be a close game, was the Scott County Central game against Leopold. A popular pick for the, for the upset was Leopold knocking off the three-time defending tournament champion Scott County Central Braves. Rachel, it didn't seem like that was going to happen right from the start. No, I mean, I think uh, Scott County Central jumped out to an 8-0 lead and kind of never looked back. I mean, from the beginning, or uh, Leopold looked rattled and sped up. You know, yeah. that's the thing that Scott County Central wants to speed you up, and they did that exactly how they wanted to tonight against Leopold. And that's what, you know, Andy Leopold's coach, Andy Beck, told me after the game, too. Um, so, you know, it didn't materialize. And that's something that now Leopold can go back and sort of learn from that, but... It's, and I think more for me, it was more Scott County Central. You know, they weren't looking to make a statement. They don't have any statements to make. I mean, they've earned their respect, even though I know, you know, we talk about Otto Porter being gone. So many other people, I think 10 or 11 seniors total from that team last right. year. A lot of them, all of them started except for Dominique Porter, who's back. So, you know, for me, it's it's more us finding out about this team. You know what I mean? Right. They, they, they walked into a game where they were supposed to have trouble and just – dominated it right. so so I think that's a good sign and it, it really makes me excited to see how they fare against Notre Dame now sure against Notre Dame that's that's the other semifinal that'll actually be the 730 semifinal on Thursday 
Rachel, you and I a couple years ago went down to Scott County Central and we saw yes. Notre Dame play play the Braves and Notre Dame came out on top. That was when Otto Porter and, and Jacob Tolbert went head to head. They played last year, but Tolbert was sick. But so, Tolbert yeah. missed that game, right? Okay. He was sick. Rachel, what what do you anticipate in this game between the the Braves and the Bulldogs? Well, I think it'll be interesting to watch the guards play. Yeah. Um, you know, because they're, they're so strong for both teams. You know, tonight one of the things that was supposed to make a difference in the Leopold game, I guess this is the opposite guard play, but it was supposed to make a difference. Because Leopold's much bigger than Scott County right. Central, and so I, I think the general consensus was well, Leopold will be able to get on the boards, and tonight they got beat on the boards all night. So you know, and that's one thing Dom Dominic Porter brought up after the game is well, again Notre Dame's going to be bigger than them. And uh, so if, 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 if Notre, if, let's see if, you know, Scott County Central can, can rebound against Notre Dame. But then, I, but, and that'll be, I think, a big key to who wins or loses. But I think the one thing, the more interesting thing to watch will be those, you know, these guards play. Watch Dominic Porter face up against, um, you know, and Lamarcus Stewart face up against Nathan Meistet. Right. To see who can stop who. Because we know both these teams can play fast, you know. I think uh, earlier this year, Notre Dame decided they couldn't really run with Sykeston. Right. So I think they'll be interested to see if they think they can run with Scott County Central, right. or if they kind of take the approach they did against Sykeston, which obviously worked when they right. upset them um, one week. So I think that'll help them. I don't know that Sykeston and Scott County Central are the same thing, but there's certainly lessons there. So you know, I look forward to a really big up and a really you know a lot of up and down game, and I think it'll be an exciting game. And I think again we'll learn so much more about about Scott County Central. We kind of know. Notre Dame have played these big games. We've, we've right. seen them play Sykes, and we've seen them play in the Seymour Conference tournament. We haven't seen that so much from Scott County Central yet this year. So, so we're gonna we're gonna learn about them. Sure. The the team that Notre Dame beat, Advance. Advance has been giving a lot of teams a yeah. lot of trouble. Absolutely. Uh, they they gave Scott County Central a, a good challenge in the Oran Invitational the, at the beginning of the season. Um, again against Notre Dame uh, tonight, they gave Notre Dame a, a tough game. Advance is an interesting team. It's a team that I, I think we're still trying to figure out just how good they can be and how consistent they can be. Yeah, that's the thing. Well, I think tonight the thing was Notre Dame just warmed down, mm-hmm. which is which is what another thing that makes Scott County Central Notre Dame interesting. Now that I think about that, because they're not probably not going to be able to wear each other down. Right. They're two. They're two teams that are used to being uh, being the ones doing the wearing down. Right. So I think you know it'll be interesting to see who's at the end of the third quarter, start of the fourth quarter, and on you know who, which teams the teams grabbing the jerseys and which are sure. the ones bending over at the way. So, um, but as far as advance goes, you know yeah, for three quarters or so they gave uh, they gave Notre Dame a really good game, and you know I don't have a great understanding of what they're doing and how they're doing it because I haven't seen them play that much. But um, but I think. The thing, and this is what the Notre Dame players, from what I read, have said after the game, is that you know when you play Advance, you're gonna have to play well. You're gonna have to right. beat Advance. Right. Um, and I think that's a that's a big step for a team where a big. I I view it as a compliment for a team that when they come in any you night, you're gonna have to beat them. So, um, and that's what Notre Dame did tonight. They fourth quarter they had to beat them, and they did. And you know I think if you're Advance and you tip your hat and you move on, so to go on to face it as at Liverpool now. Right. That should be a great game, a, a great game between Leopold and, and Advance. Yeah, I mean, there's, yeah, that, that should be a more evenly matched game, and I, th- I would think so. You know, we should get some really good games on Thursday, hopefully. Sure. That's going to do it for us here at SeamoBall.com. We're going to enjoy our day off, get a little <laughs> bit of rest, and be back at it on Thursday. Thanks for joining us, and you can find all your coverage of the Southeast Missouri Christmas Tournament here at SeamoBall.com.